and good morning friends uh happy thursday morning i'm sorry that today is not one of our regular virtual field trips uh instead there's something else that i want to talk about that might not be um that, that isn't the same sort of you know family friendly stuff that uh we've been doing with our virtual field trips instead uh, i just want to have more of a more of a frank uh, discussion about some of my thoughts uh, around uh, where we sit right now. So, uh, so yeah, please bear with me. Um, and uh, I'm just going to start rambling, I guess. So yesterday, uh, our provincial government here in British Columbia uh, announced uh, that we are getting ready to move to phase two of uh, the province's panic, uh, pandemic response. Uh, what that means in, in, in real terms is that uh, some businesses that have been closed due to the pandemic are going to be allowed to start to reopen. And one of those businesses that's allowed to reopen starting a little bit later, uh, like in the middle of the month, is going to be uh, sites like ours that come, uh, come May 15th or so, just before the long weekend, were allowed uh, to, to open subject to all sorts of conditions and uh, considerations that have yet to be, uh, yet to be decided on. Uh, we're a long way from knowing what best practice is going to be. We're a long way from knowing uh, how to handle this procedurally, uh, how, to, how to handle this um, to keep the public safe, to keep, uh, to keep uh, our staff safe. And so it's a really, really challenging, uh, it's a really, really challenging time. Uh, as a uh, small business owner uh, that depends incredibly heavily on tourism and people visiting, uh, I'm stuck in a tough spot right now. And the reason that I'm doing today's video instead of our usual virtual field trip is I want to talk about that. So first of all, uh, there's huge motivation. There's huge pressure to, uh, for us to reopen. You know, in fact, tomorrow was supposed to be our opening day for the season. Before any of this happened, we planned that May, 9, May 8th, or so was going to be the start of our season, that we were going to open up, we'd have staff, we'd have the site ready, all those sorts of things. And then the pandemic hit uh, about eight weeks ago. Uh, at that point, we adapted pretty quickly. We started to do these virtual field trips. We started to think about other ways that we could, you know, pay, get enough money to pay the bills uh, without uh, endangering anybody's health. And so we've come up with a few things. We've been implementing those. Well, Yesterday, uh, yesterday's announcement sort of changes that. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of pressure from a lot of fronts to to open up. Frankly, before we're ready, uh, and I am at this point disinclined to open up anytime soon. The truth is, uh, our heritage site here in a small community uh, has a huge responsibility to the community. That uh, they're the reason that we exist. They're the reason we were created in the first place. Uh, I can't in good conscience invite people to come and visit us, to come from other places and visit the small community when the advice still is to not spread this disease around. Uh, I understand that provincial campgrounds may be opening as soon as June 1st, but again, you know, that works okay if you're not traveling far to get to one of those places, but if you have to travel to get to a campground, you're still standing the chance of, of spreading the coronavirus around. And we shouldn't be traveling right now. It is irresponsible of us as a business to encourage people to travel. Yes, I could open my doors. Yes, I could start giving tours. Yes, I could offer meals in the garden with adequate uh, spacing. But, I, I mean, I'm torn. I, 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 you know, am I... Am I going to lead by innovating and opening as soon as possible and trying to make a dollar before my competitors can make a dollar? Am I, you know, leading by being responsible uh, and protecting public health and, and, and staying closed? Uh, these, are, these are such incredibly difficult things to balance right now. They're such incredibly challenging, fraught things. I mean, and not only is it about public health, not only is it about the community writ large, it's also about what's, what's right for my family. You know, is it right for my family to make money when there's money to be made by opening up and inviting people here? You know, boy, that's tempting because these are tough times. You know, as I've said before in some of these other videos, I don't get operating funding from government. Uh, I have to pay the bills, the power bill, the telephone bill, the internet bill. You know, I've got to cover all of these things whether or not we're open. And if I'm not making any money, it gets really expensive to handle a big site like this. 
So there's this huge pressure and motivation now to, you know, open when I'm allowed to. But at the same time, I don't think that it's responsible. I don't think that we're quite there yet. Um, the truth is nothing has changed from six or eight weeks ago. The virus is still the virus. It still is just as contagious as it was before. It still is capable of putting just as many people in the hospital, just as capable of overwhelming the healthcare system. Yes, we've been pretty fortunate here in BC for a bunch of factors that were just dumb luck, as well as smart thinking by our leadership, where we have not seen the number of cases that a lot of other places have seen. But that doesn't mean that we have, that we should be complacent yet, right? So the truth is, um, although I'm gonna get a lot of phone calls now, I know that I'm going to get a lot of phone calls. We're not going to open. We're not going to open until we're ready to do so. Until I'm confident that I can keep uh, the public safe. Until I'm confident that I can keep my staff safe. Until I'm confident that I can keep my community safe. Uh, we are not going to be opening our doors. And you know, I hope that other businesses that are in a similar position to mine choose to do the same thing. It's hard, like these are hard times when you don't have the certainty, when you don't have the money coming in. We're all feeling a little desperate. I think we're all trying to, to, to justify our decisions a little bit and, and find ways to make it work. But some of that's just, you know, just it's the bargaining stage of grief as I've called it in a, in a, in a personal post. Uh, it's not necessarily actually being innovative. So it's, this is tough stuff. I mean, I want lots of input. I want to hear from, from, from our stakeholders. I want to hear from our volunteers. I want to hear from the public. I mean, what do you think? You know, do you think that right now is the time to, to go guns a-blazing and find a way to open and try to be innovative and try to be, you know, try to lead the crowd by, by inviting people back? Or is now the time to, to still be disciplined and still be conservative and still be careful? I, I'm inclined to do the latter. But, you know, the pressure is big. You know, every bill that comes in, every f inquiry that we get, it's hard not to want to say yes. You know, yes, come stay in our campground. Oh, it'll be fine. I know you're self-contained. You know, people give me all of these reasons why we should just let them stay. But uh, it's just hard. It's just really, really hard. None of us have ever been in a situation like this one with uh, a pandemic like this, not in our lifetimes. You know, these little choices that we make can have big impact. You know, if I did have somebody here that stayed here and visited uh, a local winery and a local fruit stand and a couple other things and got a whole bunch of people sick and I helped facilitate that, I would feel awful. So anyways, I, I just don't know what to do. Even if even if we did open and, and met all the requirements that are being uh, that are being considered right now, you know, plexiglass shields and sanitizing surfaces that people touch on a regular basis. Um, it would be really, that's a lot of staffing. That's a lot of time and effort. You know, I don't know if, if it's worth the manpower, the staff power to, you know, wipe down things with sanitizer all the time. It might just be easier just to stay closed for a while longer. So, you know, for those of you that are, you know, asking questions in the comments, um, it's hard to see them just because I'm outside in the bright sunshine, but um, I mean, we're exploring all the support options, of course. Uh, we're, you know, considering every consideration. Um, I know that you guys will be there to support us when we do open. I know that you'll support whatever decision we make because we've tried to be really transparent about how we're making our decisions. Uh, and I really appreciate that. Those of you that have spent the time to buy a season's pass, that have joined our pantry share, that have just sent private notes of encouragement, that all makes this so much easier than it would be otherwise. And I am already so much more fortunate than so many other places. So many small businesses that are at serious risk of going under. You know, this, at least this property is still gonna be here. That beautiful building behind me is still gonna be there uh, no matter how long this takes, but man. So anyways, I am, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm rambling at this point, but you know, these are just some of the things that we're thinking about right now. Uh, I do see some of my, uh, you know, some of my colleagues in related industries uh, really pushing hard to try and figure out ways to make it happen for themselves. And I, I, I give them credit for that. I give them credit for, for trying to find a way to make it work in, in what we're all starting to call the new normal. But we need to be careful. And I think 
one of the key jobs of, of a museum, of a heritage site, of a, of, of a place like ours is to be conservative by nature. Our job is to conserve things. That building behind me wouldn't exist if people weren't very conservative about how they treated it, how they used it, how they cared for it. Uh, they didn't turn it into something you know, so radically different that we couldn't put it back to the way that it was. And you know, maybe it's that conservative uh, you know, mindset, that, that, that small c conservative mindset that's going to uh, help inform our decisions going forward. Now, yesterday somebody uh, posted on yesterday's video uh, that uh, they're going to miss these videos when they're gone. The truth is I've been enjoying doing them so much and you guys have been enjoying watching them so much that we're not going to end these videos anytime soon. Even if we open to the public, I would carve 20 minutes out of my day for sure to keep doing these videos. Uh, in fact, I uh, have gathered the technology just in the last little bit to be able to invite other people in via Zoom and things like that and actually be a part of these Facebook live chats. That's something that we're going to start to do soon, turn some of these presentations into, into more of a speaker series. And then people can come from wherever they are to speak on topics relating to this place with me. Uh, we're going to find other ways to innovate. Uh, it sounds like I'm about to receive a, a, just a little bit of funding to extend Wi-Fi uh, coverage to the entire site, which will make doing these videos so much easier. And think of all the other things we can do if we've got high-speed internet to the entire site, you know, being able to live stream from anywhere all the time. So we're going to keep thinking, we're going to keep innovating. I am not opening on May 15th, I will say that much. I doubt that I'm going to be opening my campground on June 1st, like the provincial government will. But there's pressure to do it, and it's, you know, it's hard to deny, but we'll see. Anyways, guys, I feel like this is just a bit of talk therapy. Uh, I appreciate you all being a part of this therapy session, and uh, we'll get back to our regular virtual field trips uh, tomorrow, uh, where we've got a, 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 fun, uh, a fun little cooking demonstration that we're going to do together tomorrow. So, anyways, thank you so much for watching. And uh, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Uh, we're all getting through this together, even if we're apart. And we'll uh, see you again soon. Okay, bye-bye for now.